time. You have changed. I just want to get this over with as quickly as possible. All right, then what should we do? <laughs> no way, Angela. Look, it's one thing blackmailing me to, uh, to help you with a scam. But this is your game, all right? Now you tell me what you want to do. Oh, no, nobody could have changed that much. Even a flim-flam like you. Well, believe it. Those days are over. Really? Hmm. You mean you don't get even a little charge? Just a buzz being back in the game? Honey, you have every right to be angry with your father, believe me, but shutting the door in his face like that... You know, at least he felt bad enough about what happened to come when here When he see. should have felt bad was when he decided to use my testimony to hurt Kevin in court today, when he decided to put me on the stand so I can incriminate my own boyfriend. Rachel, don't dwell on it, all right? It wasn't the end of the world. I am so sorry. I wanted to help you. And now... Now, nothing. Hey, what happened today was not your fault. There's only one person that can help me now. If she will. All I can do is think about Kevin. Come on, sit down and eat a sandwich. Talk to me. Well, I did what Luna said. I searched my heart and I, I listened to it carefully. And what did your heart tell you? Kevin wasn't lying when he said that he didn't. When he said that he didn't rape me. All right. You sure? I'm sure. Well, then there's only one thing to do. Call Hank Gannon and tell him the truth. I was over at your office. Thank God I finally tracked you down. Yeah, yeah. Here in all my glory. Well, cheer up. I think I found the witness you've been looking for. Oh, yeah? Who's that? The one that's going to give you the testimony you need to put these four rapists behind bars. Thought you'd be happier. I'm happy. Oh, you could have fooled me. I'm happy about this witness of yours. But... You weren't in the courtroom this afternoon? No, I wasn't. What happened? I had to tear my daughter to pieces on the stand. Rachel? It's the only daughter I've got. Had. Until I alienated her. For good. Look, it's gonna take time. I'm sure she'll forgive you. Yeah. Look, wherever you said you had a witness, why don't you tell me about him? Uh, her. You, may I bring her in? She's here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. Bring her in. Hey, Gannon, this is Carol Swift. Miss Swift? Uh, Carol uh, was a senior at Landview University. Uh, she just graduated. She was at the fraternity house the night of the spring fling party. She has information that is going to convince any jury that Marty Saybrook's telling the truth. Hank's not at the office. Uh, he's not at home either. Guess it's all for the best. He already warned me that uh, if I drop the charges against Kevin, that it'll make the case against the others that much harder to prove. I wasn't that strong to begin with. I mean, the whole, all the testimony makes it look like I made the whole thing up. So if I change my story now, there's no way a jury's gonna believe the rest of what I'm saying is true. I really... I guess you really do reap what you sow. Marty, look at me. I want you to tell me the name of the guy we're talking about. The one who didn't do it. Kevin. That's him. Now, what's his whole name? 
Kevin Buchanan, Sway, what are you doing? Okay, now tell me the names of the three other guys who you accused. What for? This is stupid. Is it? How come you can't even say their names? Because they make me sick. Why? Because... Because they raped you. And what was the other guy's name? Kevin Buchanan. You want to talk to Hank? Yeah. Don't worry what this will do to your case. Your case is plenty strong because it's the truth. Look, Angela, all right, you're the one who got me back into this life, all right? And believe me, there's no kick. Mm, gee, honey, I'm sorry. I wanted it to be good for you, too. <laughs> Angela, why are you doing this to me? Because you are the best. How can I be the best if my heart is not in it? Well, it was okay with those wealthy socialites that you uh, whined and dined and never declined. They never suspected that your uh, heart wasn't in it. I need your help so that I can find this financial opportunity in Landview and then I'll get out of town. And cut me loose. <laughs> oh, baby, you really have changed. I thought you were going to say cut me in. Yeah, I'll cut you loose. I'll uh, give you your divorce. You can burn those letters. Mm. What a shame to see all that incriminating purple prose go up in smoke. But you can torch them. Get back on the straight and narrow with little miss, mother of two, seeks willing Look, sap. Angela, don't even start in on Tina right now, okay? What do you tell her anyway about your coming here? Look, it's covered. All right, now just get on with the business here. Some input. Now, look, I told you, this is your deal, all right? And I, certainly you must have some ideas. Well, I had some. Um, mail order. No, no, come on. That takes too long. I want to get out of this job ASAP. Well, why don't we pull a Ponzi? Oh, come on. Come on, get a grip, Angela. Everyone knows that the, about the pyramid scam. We won't be uh, in it long enough to net a profit. Okay. What then? You really have lost your touch, haven't you? Like, I mean, you're thinking in, in terms too visible for a small town and, you know, not big enough for us to make any money besides pocket change, all right? What we need is, um, like an investment scam or a charity, something like that. You're right. You're right. I am rusty. <laughs> you know, I can't even remember the last time I delved into our little bag of tricks. Wow. You kept all this stuff? I'm sentimental. What can I say? <laughs> you know this one, huh? Santa Monica, right? Seattle. That's right. Seattle. <laughs> and uh, that pyramid did pay off. Mm -hmm. Angela? Anybody here? Stay right here, and you be quiet. Well, hi, Cord. Hey, Angela, how you doing? You're looking well today. Actually, I was in the area. I just, uh, I want to come by and say how you were doing. <laughs> and to tell you that I meant what I said the other day when I said about you know, giving that insurance money over to you, you know, to the tabernacle. Uh, Look, Angela, I'm far from dead, right? I'm feeling a lot better these days because of you. I'm telling you, I feel like a million dollars ever since I, you know, got that off my chest and I told you everything that happened to me in job. Well, that's why it's called unburdening. Have you told Tina yet? Uh, no. No, I, I tried to on a couple of occasions, but uh, we always seem to get interrupted. Is that really what's happening? Or are you still afraid to tell her? I think maybe that's part of it. Angel, I betrayed a good friend. I abandoned his daughter in some war-torn country. Now, what if Tina can't forgive me for that? Court, I do not think that you could have such a deep and abiding love for a woman who couldn't forgive you. 
I just pray that you can let go of your fears because it is through Tina's love that you will be able to forgive yourself. Um, Brother Joel, I'll be just a few more minutes. Could you just wait for me? I'm sorry. Look, I'm keeping you from something here. Uh, again, I just wanted to come by and, and thank you again. And, um, and what? And tell you that I'm not trying to buy my way into heaven with giving you this insurance money. Look, Angel, you look, helped me no, out, all right? You have and already been far too generous, and this is a great deal of money. Um, excuse me. Brother Joel, uh, yeah. why don't you just go wait for me in the office? Oh, yes, ma'am. God be with you. <laughs> Too generous, darling. You know the old saying, when the going gets tough, the uh, tough go shopping. Listen, this isn't going to be easy. You're making me a grandmother. <laughs> and you know what else isn't easy? Picking out clothes for a baby when you don't know its gender. Well, Mother, it's the 90s. You're supposed to be making non-gender specific purchases. Nonsense. Now, when are you and Andrew going to know? <laughs> the baby's born. Cassie, you just said this is the 90s. Why are you wandering around in the Middle Ages trying to guess at the sex of your baby? Find out. Mother. What's bothering you? Come on, you're cranky, you're shopping compulsively. So, Gib, what's going on? Well, for one thing, Marty Saybrook in this trial of the century. It was certainly not the thrill of my life having Jason get up in front of people and... Oh, say how he loves Leanne. Of course, chaste and pure from afar. Now, Mother, you knew that. So what else is bothering you? <sighs> it really is lovely here at dusk. Mother. Well... Sloane's book is going to be published soon. His book about Victor Lord. Yes, indeed. Any day, any hour, any minute. Yes, yes. Well, I'm Victor Lord's widow, and neither Sloane nor his publisher has seen fit to allow me to set eyes on the manuscript. Well, what do you think that's in it that is such cause for concern? Is that a cherry tree or a pink dogwood behind you? I just, I never get those two right. Well, what is worrying you? What could there be about your marriage to Victor Lord that you don't want the world to know? Honey, Bo and I are going to leave now, unless you want me to stay with you, and I will. No, no, I am fine. Kevin and I are just going to forge for dinner. Well, we can order in. I mean, you've had a rough day, and... Isn't really your strong suit. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have been studying the art of sandwich making with Joey, so. No, would you please all just stop worrying about me, really? Okay, I am fine. Okay. 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 My poor baby girl. I know, I know. I know. I told him not to do this. I told him not to put her on the stand and hurt her like that. I can't believe forcing her to incriminate Kevin like that. How can he do that to his own daughter? I don't know. But I'll tell you something. You and Rachel, you really helped Kevin when you cross-examined her. Do you think so? No, do I think? I know, all right? You're a great mother. You're a great lawyer. Now you have a great little house to live in, too. Let's go home, okay? We'll just give the trial the night off. I think you won anyway, okay? Hey, let's go home and make some great love. You're a great persuader. Great. Miss Swift, I'm so glad you went to Andrew and he brought you here to me. It was very brave of you to come forward like that. I admit I didn't want to, but after seeing what Marty was going through in court, 
I just didn't imagine it would be so terrible for her. It's so hard to prove rape. Your testimony may make the difference. Baby, on your delicate skin, I use Water Baby Sunblock. It protects without irritating. It tickles. Up you go. Water Babies. Put it between your baby and the sun. So, you want to save on long distance? What a pain. Restrictions on... Court, you don't owe me a thing. Angela, for the rest of my life, I'm going to deal with the fact that Darius died because of me. Now, before he died, he asked me to do one thing. That's look out for his little girl. And I couldn't even do that. But you had no other choice. You were fleeing the country. You couldn't have made it past enemy lines, even if you tried. That's the point, Angela. I didn't even try. Now, if I thought that Fila was alive, if I thought there was some way I could get to her, I would do that. But I wouldn't even know where to start looking for this little girl. That's why I want to give that money here to the tabernacle, all right? To, to, to make atonement. Cord, I don't think that you've thought this through. Angela, I know that a check is not going to fix anything, all right? But I've got this money, right? The, the insurance money that was paid out to me when it was reported that I was dead. I would like that money to do some good. I would like to give it to the tabernacle. Cord, I understand all that, but I still don't think that you've thought this through. Angela, I'm not going to take no for an answer, all right? I'm going to have my lawyer work it out tomorrow. Well, I can't argue with that. Good. Thank you for your support. Good. It means a great deal to me and to the tabernacle. I'll be in touch. Stop grinning at me like that. So it's the deal with you in court, huh? No deal. No con, no scam. Oh, really? And why is it I don't believe that, huh? Is it because you've got him so primed and ready for any Murphy you want to pull on him? Don't you worry about my business with Cord. Let's just stick to our game. Now, you gave me an idea before, and with your ingenuity... Yeah, and enough my... with the flattery, okay? Who is the mark? Well, we need someone willing. And, of course, very rich. Certain actions that I took during Victor's life that, well, could be misinterpreted if... Well, certain actions doesn't sound so general. Well, honey, it's... We both know that I haven't always lived my life on the straight and narrow. So I certainly have been trying very hard to become a, a new woman. I'm certainly not the same woman I was before they found that lump in my breast. And it just enrages me that Sloane could, could manage to dredge up a lot of old garbage at a time where, for my health's sake, I need to wipe the slate clean. I mean, here I am, I'm meditating, I'm eating health foods. For God's sake, I'm even going to revival meetings. Mother, mother, I, I don't doubt your sincerity. And the only thing that matters is the good that you do now. That's what people kind of judge you by. Not by any transgressions you may have committed in the past. Oh, <laughs> Yes, that's true. Oh, that's so true, true, true. <laughs> Thank you. You've given me the most marvelous idea. About what? Wiping the slate clean. Yeah, I wanted you guys to know the good news. Good news? We've got our first breakthrough in the case. I've got a... What's up? Um... I've got some news for you, too, Hank. I'm not going to like this very much, am I? Um, I'm sure about what I said before. When I said that Kevin didn't... That Kevin didn't rape you. We have to withdraw the charges against him, Hank. No way. Why? Oh, come on, you guys. Don't you get it? We've got our first breakthrough here. We've got a witness whose testimony can seal this thing. Who is it? We've got a witness whose testimony can give us our best shot yet at a conviction. Well, that's great. Who? Well, but it has to be against the other three, not Kevin. Marty, I told Look, you. Look, he didn't do it, Hank. I know I'm contradicting what I said before, and I know this complicates things, but I'm sure I'm right about him. Yeah? Are you so sure that you're willing to risk that those other three guys are acquitted? Because that's exactly what's going to happen if you drop the charges against Kevin Buchanan. 
They're gonna walk, Marty. And it's just a matter of time before they do to some other woman what they did to you. He's a bank. Look, I am telling you straight here. Nora will use this thing to totally destroy Marty's credibility. Her whole case is built on the premise that Marty is a disturbed woman and a compulsive liar. Now, are you really ready to put this whole case on the line because of some hunch, some feeling? This is your call, Marty. You have to make up your own mind. I'm sorry, Hank, but I have to tell the truth. And Marty, I want you to tell the truth. But I'm worried that you're confused as to what the truth really is. Marty, can you tell me sequentially everything that happened to you that night from the time that Kevin took you up to his room to the time that he returned? No, I can't. But I do know that Kevin came back and told me that he'd forgotten his keys. Marty, look, your statements against Kevin, which the jury has heard over and over again, are very damaging. And they're backed up by physical evidence of a struggle. In fact, most of our physical evidence ties in only to Kevin Buchanan. His room, his sweater, his jacket, his missing sweatband. Marty, the man had your sweater dry cleaned. Come on, and he's the only one of the accused whose face you scratched, Marty. Look, look, I'm sorry, all right? I didn't mean to upset you. Forget it. It's not your fault. You know, I think Rachel's testimony was a convincing defense of Kevin. And that got to you today. But, Marty, you've got to stick to your story. Stay focused. Remember what you told the police, Marty. That's the truth. Oh, I don't know. Look, if I didn't believe it was true, I never would have subjected my daughter to what she went through today. Listen, just because you got a personal crusade against Kevin Buchanan doesn't mean that Marty shouldn't tell the truth. She's been through enough, Hank. Let her do what she has to. So, how is your dad doing? Is he feeling better? Well, he's still in traction. It's a lot of pain, but he's definitely doing better. Good. Good. I know it must be hard for him not being able to be with you in the courtroom, you know, to stand behind you. Well, it's great having my mom and Bo and Joey there. Rachel. So, are my... Lessons with Chef Joey and the art of sandwich making paying off. <laughs> yeah, the ranch dressing's a very nice touch. Thank you. And what about the pimento? Rachel, the sandwiches are great. But being here with you, mm -hmm, it's like, oh, I don't know. It's like a, it's like a sauna after a marathon. <laughs> You've run marathons? <laughs> I'm referring to the last couple days in court here. I know how you feel. Hey, that's it. Stop knocking yourself out trying to be upbeat for me, all right? I can take it. Take what? There is nothing to take. Look, just eat. Rachel, I know you're upset about what happened in court today with your father. Father? What father? Orphans draw a lot of attention. It's got to be overseas, though. Nothing too easy to track down. Serve Somalis what? Oh, mosaic. No particular ethnicity. Just <clears throat> foreign and lost. Unwanted. You will be the chairman of the organization with a, a foreign, generic-sounding accent. Why orphans? I'm a sucker for kids. You know that. It's true. So are a lot of other people. Photographs. Okay. A picture is worth a thousand bucks. Adorable, impoverished orphans. Checkbooks will be flapping like shutters in a hurricane. Who is the mark? And if it is Cord Roberts, you can count me out. You got that? Oh, yes, I know, I know. Tina wouldn't want you to be conning the father of her little darlings. 
But she'd forgive you, I'm sure, since she's stuck with you this long. <laughs> well, sweetheart, you just have all the answers, don't you? I don't know why you need me for. Because pulling a con is a lot like making love. It's best with more than one and less than three people and a minimal amount of equipment. And you, a woman of God. You just keep Cord out of this. He has nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. uh, who is this um, Fila he was talking about, huh? None of your business. So, who is our little chicken going to be? Mm -mm -mm. We need someone with a fat checkbook and a pocket full of good intentions. Oh, no, not at all. What can I do for you? Actually, it's what can I do for you. Here, I want you to take this for your summer retreat. Dorian, please. It is better to light one candle than to curse the darkness. And maybe with this you can buy some patches. Do you know that a check like this could have such an impact on an organization, like, for instance, the Lost Children of the World Fund? Oh, I would love to get involved with an organization like that. Especially if it would encourage other people to get involved as well. I don't mind my name being bandied about if it's for a good cause. In fact, why don't I have my public relations people get in touch with you, get all the details, and that way we could get a press release out as soon as possible. Oh, certainly. That way your contribution will do double the work. Marvelous. Well, I better be going. Oh. Thank you. Oh, no, thank you. Really, you have helped me so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> How about that? Well, that just could have been any easier, huh? Talk about playing for miracles. Ask and ye shall receive. It just fell right in our lap, honey. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. She just breezed in here and dropped all this on my lap. Aha. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, this kid sure won't be wanting for clothes. Oh, well, she's irked because we haven't informed her yet of our child's gender. Oh, please. Well, um, I am going for the sun grant next week. Well, you aren't having any problems, are you? No, no. I just thought, you know, if we should... Well, you know, if we want to know if... No! Okay, okay. Don't bite my head off. No, sweetheart, I mean, why would you want to take all the surprise out of oh, this? Well, the surprise is I thought it would help us to get to know our baby better and sooner. And... Uh, is that it, or do you just want to give Dorian the information that she needs? Sweetie, look, I'm so, we're going to have a whole lifetime to get to know the baby better. We have all the information we need. Dad, Andrew. Mom, Cassie. Hometown, Landview. The uh, circumstances of the conception were a deep and abiding love. <laughs> right? Now, what else do you need to know? Mm -hmm, I think that about covers it. Okay. And now that we got this surprise witness for the prosecution, Carol Swift, I got a feeling that Marty's rape case is going to come to a speedy conclusion. And... Uh, right. We can put our attention back where it belongs, which is on this little miracle. <laughs> Glass. You want me to put it with a contact sheet? Yes, please. What? What is it? Uh, what is it? Oh, my. 
I'm sorry. I've just, I've just taken over your house. No, no, it's not you. It's, it's uh, this stuff, you know, and it's, it's just a symptom. Does it make you angry? No, I kind of like it. I, I like tripping over your life everywhere I go. I just don't want it to cause the same problems that it caused my, my marriage to Hank. Wait a minute, no. Why would that happen? Well, history does repeat it. No, no, I, I'm not Hank. No, thank goodness for that. I mean, the Hank we saw this afternoon, that was Hank at his worst, just bullheaded like a steamroller. Yeah, yeah, we... Nora, honey, we both have relationships from our recent past that could cause some confusion for us, you know? Let's not let them. You're talking about Sarah? There are two big differences between Hank and Sarah. Number one, Hank is alive. Number two, you felt nothing but love for Sarah. Yeah, but you must have loved Hank once. Well, I mean, and you probably still do. In a way. I plead the fifth. Okay, look, they're both from our past. We just won't let them um, haunt our present, okay? Sounds good to me. And we'll always make time for each other. Okay, no matter what. Always. As much time as you want. Mm. Time out. Hello. Hey, Bo, how you doing? It's Cord. Listen, I missed a meeting with Nora tonight. I, I'm sorry. I've been running behind all day. Do you want to talk to her? Ah, uh, yeah, that'd be great. Thanks. Cord. Hi, Cord. Hey, Nora, listen, I'm sorry I missed that meeting. I, I've been way behind all day. Meeting? No problem. No problem at all. Did you find anything? Well, I dropped off a file at your office. It's a list of potential witnesses. I stopped by the PD and I talked to the prosecution. They don't have any new information. And they're still looking for this sweat band that was allegedly used to gag Marty during the rape, but that hasn't turned up yet, so I think we're in pretty good shape. Great. Great. That means we're not going to have any surprises in court tomorrow. I hate surprises. Marty, I want you to listen to me and listen to me good. The outcome of this case lies heavily on your testimony. Look, what you've got to do is put the confusion behind you, and that's what this is. You're just confused. Now, tomorrow when I put you on that stand, this is our shot to put these guys away so they can never do to another woman what they did to you. Now, I want you to get yourself a good meal and a good night's sleep. And I'll see you tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock. Okay? You too. All right. Good night. I guess maybe I am just confused. It didn't sound confused to me until Hank pushed the idea back into your head. Marty, you know in your heart what's right. You just need to let your mind follow. Think about it. You can remember what happened in Kevin's room. Think back.
keep wondering um, what my parents would say if they were here. How would they feel if, if, if I lost the case and they saw my reputation destroyed in the courtroom? What would they tell me to do? For one month, I indulged in dark chocolate. All right, now, the, the, the chairman of this lost show in the world, he's, he's got to be sincere enough to look legit, but unapproachable, you know, so no one tries to buddy up with me. It's good to see you back working at what you're good at. I, mean, I, I don't even understand why I have to be this fundraising guy. I mean, why am I the leader? It's your scam. You know what? You were right. <laughs> Besides, I never really ever felt comfortable with your disguises. I could always just see right through them. Well, that's because you saw me put them on. That's why, honey. No, even when I hadn't seen you, I just knew it was you. I... No, there's no way that Dorian Lord will ever believe that you are anything but Kane Rogan with a fake mustache. <laughs> oh, really? Really? You think so? Well, we'll just see about that, Angela. Eric Barkley. He writes a lot about family. You've read him. Yes, I have. You know, maybe Hank will see, like Barkley does, that it takes all kinds to make a family and to keep it together. No, I don't think so. He's so blinded by hate that... You know, I will never forgive him for making me make you sound so despicable on the stand. You did not make me sound despicable. You made me sound like I'm the man you love. You are. Hey, I fell in love with you. I wasn't even looking. It was the last thing on my mind. And then one day I, I got up and I thought, let's see here. I love mom, dad, brothers and sister, Duke and, and Rachel. I will never forget how you fought for my reputation, for my life today on the stand. And maybe some other people won't forget also, and this whole horrible lie about me will go away forever. Nobody can tell you what's right here, Marty. But I'm not just some objective bystander. I spent 10 years in prison for a murder I didn't commit, and I wouldn't want anybody to have to go through that misery. What am I supposed to do, Swade? I have the chance to convict the men who did this to me. Only, only if I get up and I say that I was wrong about Kevin, no one will believe the rest of my testimony. And if I do, Todd, Zach, and Powell will go free, and I'll be labeled a liar for the rest of my life. Not to me. Never to me. I believe you. And even if it does happen, even if they get off, you and I will know that you didn't take the easy way out. 
time was when you would have lied in a heartbeat to get yourself out of a spot. Now look at yourself. I'm going to wait for as long as it takes till you're ready to be touched again and held again and taken out dancing again. I want you to hold your head up and be proud. Of what? Proud to do the right thing against all odds and tell the truth. Marty, if you don't, if Kevin spends the next 10 years of his life in a jail cell, how will you ever forgive yourself for that? Okay, let's say I tell the truth. And because I do, Kevin gets off. Some of those... Some of the rapists... 